Hello, Precalculus. So today we're going to be doing a little bit of modeling with functions. Uh, this is like the Norman window problem that we did in class today. Um, and in this first example, we have a manufacturer who's making metal cans. Um, each can holds a liter of oil. And what we want to know is what are the dimensions of this can that will minimize the amount of metal used, because obviously that'll be cheaper. Um, so to start with, if a problem doesn't give you a picture, please always, always try to draw a picture. Um, it's definitely going to help setting up your equations and kind of making sense of the problem. And now if we had a can, um, you know, we might want to make a can really short and wide. So like a tuna can almost, or maybe something more like a soup can, or maybe something really tall and skinny. Okay. So there's a bunch of different shapes that this can could be in. The deciding factor on the dimensions are going to be the height of the can and also the radius of the circle for the top and the bottom of the can. So now that we've identified our two variables for our dimensions, we're going to have to come up with some formulas. Now, the first one, the amount of metal used for the can, is going to be surface area. And so when you think of surface area of a can, there's sort of two pieces here. If I were to take the outer body of this guy and roll it open, it would be a rectangle. The height of the rectangle would be the height of the can. And the length of the rectangle would be, if I were to cut this open, would be the circumference of this circle. So this is the circumference of the circle on top. Uh, you might have to look up the formula for some circumference. It's 2 pi r for circumference of a circle. So for surface area, the area of this rectangle here is going to be the height times 2 pi r. And then we're also going to have the surface area from the top of the can and the bottom of the can. The area of a circle is pi r squared. And since we have a top and a bottom, we're going to have 2 pi r squared for our surface area. Now, we have surface area going on here, but they also tell us there's one liter of oil. So we're going to need the volume of a can. Well, shoot. You don't know what the volume of a can is. Um, you could always go on the internet. The other place that you could go look is in your textbook. Um, some of you guys saw today that, let's see if I zoom out a little bit. If you go to the front of your textbook, there's a bunch of formulas. And so sure enough, if I zoom in here, you can see that there's a cylinder. And the volume of a cylinder is pi r squared h. Pi r squared, because that's the area of the circle, times the height, gives you the volume. So for our notes, let's see, the volume of a cylinder is pi r squared h, the area of the circle times the height. Okay. And now we have two formulas, but we have a lot of variables here. So if there are any numbers that you can plug in, you're going to want to do that. Um, since we, have, we know that this holds one liter of oil, we know that this guy is equal to one. Okay. So step one. Draw a diagram. After you draw your diagram, you might want to, as a next step, like step 2a, it might be helpful to guess and check. The whole point of guessing and checking being that for 2b, and sort of more importantly step 2, is to set up your formulas. And when you get to this place in your formulas, um, I no longer have volume there because it's equal to 1. Now I have 1, 2, 3 variables, but I only have two equations. And so the key here is going to be to use the substitution method. So your step 3 is solve for one variable. And you specifically want to do this for the equation that... Um, you have the number in so that like this guy only has two variables. So solve for one variable in the equation with only two variables. Okay. So if I want to solve for one of these guys, I just want to pick whichever one I think is going to be easier. Since the H doesn't have an exponent with it, I think getting the H by itself will be easier. Now, the h is connected to the r squared and the pi with multiplication. And I know the opposite of multiplication is division. So I know I can divide both sides by pi r squared. So I get h equals 1 over pi. 
pi r squared. Okay. So after I solve for one of my variables in this equation with only two variables in it, now I'm going to substitute into the equation I haven't used yet. So substitute into the equation with three variables. So instead of h up here, I'm going to plug in what h is equal to. So I have surface area equals, and instead of h, I'm going to say 1 over pi r squared times 2 pi r plus 2 pi r squared. And now I can do a little bit of uh, simplification here. So for instance, um, I have a pi on bottom and a pi on top, since this is over 1. So those can reduce. Uh, 2 times 1 is 2. And I have an r on top and an r squared on bottom, so that's going to leave me with an r on bottom. And then plus 2 pi r squared. <clears throat> now, after you get this substitution done, you're going to plug this into your graphing calculator. Okay. So in my graphing calculator, surface area is going to be y for right now and r is going to be x. So I'm going to go into my y equals on my graphing calculator, get rid of whatever is there, and I'm going to type in 2 divided by x plus 2 pi x squared. Okay. And now I want to graph this, but to graph it, we need to fix the window first. So use your xy table to adjust your window before you do anything else. It's also probably helpful here to think about um, what the problem's asking. So we're really graphing surface area with radius, and I wanted to find the minimum amount of material or the minimum surface area. So what I'm looking for when I look at my xy table is the smallest surface area, which is going to be the smallest y value that I can find. So when I go into my xy table, I'm going to scroll down and I'm looking for the smallest y value. Well, it looks like they're getting bigger and bigger and bigger. So it looks like the smallest y value I can find is happening somewhere between 0 and 2. It might be between 1 and 2, it might be between 0 and 1. So for my x's, I'm going to have to at least go out to 2. And for my y's, I'm probably going to go up to 30. So I go to window, x minute 0, because I don't care about negative radiuses. This is going to go up to 2, my y min's at 0, and I said my y max was at 30 because it's a little bit bigger than 26. And then I guess I'm going to count by 3's. Okay. So now when I graph it, I get a nice window, because I use my xy table. And the minimum of this curve is going to be the answer or part of the answer to my question. So I'm going to hit second calc min, because I want to minimize. Left bound means I need to scroll to the left of the minimum. Once you're on the left hand side of the minimum, you're going to hit enter. Right bound, now if you don't want to scroll, you can always just type in a number that you know is to the right. Since I know that 2 is to the right, because my 2 is my x max, I can hit 2 and then enter and then guess. And it gives me the minimum is 0.5419 and 5.5. .5. So I'm going to write that down on my paper now. Now to show work for this, um, draw a picture of your graph. It doesn't have to be the best picture you've ever seen, but it should be better than just a total crap sketch. When in doubt, I don't know, err on the side of better rather than worse. Your x-axis is your radius, because that was our r, is really our x, and it was in, um, oh, they didn't give units. If it was in liters, this is probably in centimeters, is my guess. Okay, and then your y-axis was your surface area, which is probably in centimeters squared. And this minimum was 0.542 and 5.5. Five, four off of my graphing calculator. So I guess we should write over here step seven. Use graph 
to find, and in this case it's the minimum, but it might be the max. So I'm going to say min or max. Okay. And then the last thing you need to do is make sure you answered the question, which is sometimes easy to forget after you did all of this work for one problem. So the question says, what dimensions minimize the amount of metal in the can? So the dimensions, meaning H and R, are the things that I need to know. Now, off of this table, this is R and this is surface area. So I have part of my answer. I have a radius of about 0.542 centimeters. Ooh, half a centimeter, that is not very big. Feels like I made a mistake somewhere. But maybe it's meters, half of a meter? That doesn't seem right either. Half of an inch? This answer is seeming wrong. Well, we'll come back to that in a second because my math looks good. So hold on. Um, in any case, then we're going to want to find H. To do this, the easiest way to find H is to go up where you isolated H, right here, and to plug in R. So on my calculator, I'm going to do, oh, by the way, this is pretty cool. When you find the minimum on your calculator, if you hit X and then enter, notice that that is the X. And the like, calculator stores that minimum value as X for you. So that means I can do... 1 divided by pi times x squared, and it's plugging 0.54, the whole decimal, into the x for me. So it's going to give me an exact answer for h. It's kind of neat. So I get h is about 1.083. Centimeters. Which really, really doesn't seem right. You know what? I'm going to go back to the problem and double check things. Oh, <laughs> that is why. So in the very beginning of the problem, um, one liter, a liter can be measured in centimeters, but it's not like one liter is like one centimeter or anything. And so you have to convert. Um, and so let's see. I have in the textbook here that it says one liter is the same as 1,000 centimeters cubed. Ugh. So one liter is 1,000 centimeters cubed, shoot. So then right here, where I had equal one, it should have equaled 1,000. And the height should have been 1,000 over pi r squared, which means this should have been 1,000. This should have been 2,000. That is gonna change some things. And this should have been 2,000. And so then on my graphing calculator, I can go ahead and insert a couple zeros there. And then that's obviously going to affect my window. So now the minimum is happening somewhere bigger. Let's see, it looks like the lowest it gets is down to 557. So somewhere between four and six. So my window should go, oops, how big were the Y's? Like 600? So my window should go out to like six maybe seven, and my y should go up to like a thousand. Notice you get the same shape of the graph, but uh, you're definitely gonna get a different minimum. So minimum is, let's see, that's on the left. Right bound to be like seven. Oh, that is much better for the size of a can, 5.4. Oh, look at that. It's just off, my decimal place is off a little bit. Do you see how it's the same? So I'm just going to go like this, move my decimal places. And that makes me think that this should probably be 10, but let's double check. So now if I do second ANS, I can get that to come up again. What? Where does it have X stored as now? That's good. Oh, it has to be 1,000. So 1, 2, 3 divided by pi x squared. Aha, and that one just has a decimal place moved over too. Well, that was lucky. Hmm. Interesting. Uh, so number eight, essential. Check your work. Because if even your math teacher can make a silly mistake like that, then you definitely can. So make sure your answers are reasonable and make sure if there is a back of the book that you can check it in the back of the book. All right, guys, um, for homework tonight, um, I want you to try one of these problems on your own. 
uh, to just give it a shot of like trying to set everything up and trying to work through a problem like this following the steps. So the first problem that I want you guys to try for a practice problem um, is number 23. So for practice tonight, I want you guys on a separate sheet of paper, maybe do it on the back side of your notes. Um, I want you to do practice problem number 23. This is on page uh, 211 in your textbook. All right, thanks, and I will see you tomorrow.